Thank you, Hadi, and uh, for a nice introduction. Um, so just uh, a bit of search introduction. Uh, I am currently the Managing Director of Salesforce Research Asia. I'm also a faculty of SMU, I'm currently taking uh, on, on leave. Um, just a bit of introduction about Salesforce uh, Research Asia. Uh, we are founded in the 2019 and based in Singapore. And this is Salesforce, the first and also the only uh, research center uh, outside of the uh, US. Um, and in our research center, we are committed to do both fundamental AI research and apply AI research project. Um, and we actually are very um, uh, open in terms of uh, doing the open research in AI. We uh, contribute to the AI community by publishing research paper, uh, publishing open source codes and libraries. Um, we also committed to train our next generation in AI talent. We have lots of collaboration with local university here in Singapore. We have joined industry PhD program uh, to co-train the PhD student uh, with local university here in Singapore. And today I'm very excited um, to share my view on responsible AI, a very important topic of AI this day. And I also like to share our experience and journey toward building um, the trusted AI power enterprise platform at Salesforce. Before I begin my talk, um, just a quick note that um, this talk contains a forward-looking uh, statement and Salesforce is a public traded company. So if you are interested in buying any uh, product from Salesforce, please uh, make your buying decision uh, fully based on the product that are commercially available in the market. So this talk is mainly for research sharing purpose, not intended for sales or marketing, okay? All right, so um, AI is very popular this day. We all know that. And um, so despite the uh, microeconomic headwind in the past, uh, recent year, uh, AI has been continued to thrive uh, recently. And uh, we continue to grow in a very rapid uh, pace in the coming year. And according to a market survey, um, the global AI market um, is projected to grow in an annual compound rate at about 36% in the projected year and will reach about $400 billion uh, by 2027. And AI has tremendous opportunity um, to business. And also we have a, a, a very uh, large responsibility to de deliver AI um, to our society. As impact of AI to the society getting more and more uh, 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 mass, and uh, we have a lot of concern of, about AI race around the topic of AI ethics data governments, legal and trust issue around the world. And i um, just showing some uh, headline uh, about uh, AI ethics over the past few months around the world. And here represents some of the news from US, UK, Singapore, and around other countries. And as we can see that as AI is getting more and more popular, the exact concern about AI bias, discrimination, harms, transparency, privacy, all, all these issues fail globally. So if this uh, bad hit night and, um, and, uh, and, uh, and also this uh, ethics um, is committed to everyone's responses, it's not convincing enough. And hopefully this slide will convince you that responsible AI is very important. And responsible AI is just paying good business. And if you look at some survey by IBM and um, uh, We Communication, investing in responsible AI pays off to business. Um, according to the survey, 86% of the consumer, they are more loyal to the company with good ethics. And 69% of the consumer, they will spend more money if the company demonstrating the good ethics. And 75% of executives, they view that ethics is the key source of competition um, for the differentiation. On the other hand, if the company fails to invest in response to AI, that can also cause the company in a very bad sequence. And according to the survey by Data Robert and uh, World Economic Forum, about one third of the company that fail uh, in investing in response to AI, they will cause a significant loss in both the revenue, customer, employee, and even incur the legal fees in the process. That means the response to AI is really important and is really positive to the company and, and business. Now, the next, I would like to share some uh, example cases of response AI as Salesforce from both defining uh, response AI principle and how we put them into practice as Salesforce. 
I'll also show some of the example research work that particularly focus on uh, Salesforce AI research. So uh, let me begin with a, a bit of more introduction about Salesforce in case you are not familiar. Salesforce is the world's largest customer relationship management software company, and we provide the software service for our customer to manage their business across the sales, marketing, services, commerce, and the collaboration, and more. And today, Salesforce um, is far beyond just a CRM platform. Um, Salesforce um, provides a unified platform that we integrate all kinds of technology in one single platform. And we provide our customer a unified solution to managing their data, and we provide a single source of truth for our customer across their business journey. And at Salesforce, trust is our number one core value. Customer trust our technology to run the business. And we're committed to build a trusted AI power platform for our customers. And over the past few years, we have been developing a powerful AI technologies and we built a, uh, a well-known Einstein AI engine, which is one of the important intelligent layer on top of our customer 360 platform to help our customer. And if you look at the statistics today, Einstein AI engine has making more than 200 billion of predictions every day to our customer in managing all kinds of business. So AI has been very important to our business and play a significant role to our customer as well. So in uh, Salesforce, we believe it's not enough just to deliver technology capability of AI, but we also have a great responsibility to ensure that AI is used in a trusted, safety, and ethical ways. And therefore, um, in our research team, we have been very serious in putting our commitment to do the trusted AI. And our ethical AI team has been defining a set of guiding principles for us to build an AI capability at Salesforce. In particular, these are the following five guiding principles that um, uh, guide our research and development at Salesforce of AI technologies. Firstly, we need to ensure AI is responsible. We need to safeguard the human right and protect the data we are trusted when we build AI technologies. Second, AI must be accountable. We need to seek an adverse feedback in the loop for continued improvement when we develop a product with our end users. The third, AI needs to be transparent. We need to develop a transparent user experience, guiding users through the machine-driven recommendation or prediction. We need to be transparent to our user how we build the AI technology. We also need to build and develop and provide a tooling for our end user and our developer, our employee, to build the AI technology and system in a more transparent way. Fourth, AI needs to be empowering. So we need to promote economic growth and deployment of AI for our customer. We need to provide our employee, the society uh, as a whole, not just to deliver uh, to our business. And also we need to empower our customer that they can use AI responsibly and safely in any application they use. And last but not least is inclusive. AI needs to be inclusive. We need to re respect the social value of all stakeholders that can be impacted, not just those of the technology creator. And define the principle of non is not sufficient. Um, we need to really put this principle into practice. And therefore, at Salesforce, we are very serious to help our developer, employee, customer to really put this principle into practice. So in particular, in order to ensure that AI is responsible, we work with the human rights expert and we educate and empower our customer and employee, our partner. We also provide the open development tooling and share our research outcome timely to our developer and partner in our communities. Second, in order to ensure that AI is accountable, we need to invite our customer feedback in the loop when we build a product. We also need to do the ethical advisory review with our ethical advisory uh, uh, councils. And last but not least, for many of the high stake or high risk research, we also conduct the external ethics review so that we can ensure the AI is conducted in the right way. And third, in order to ensure that AI is transparent, we strive for improving the model ex ex uh, explainability. And we want to ensure that our AI model 
is transparent and explainable to our customer. And we also want our customer to be able to control their data and model when they want to deploy in any application uh, in the right ways. And finally, we also publish a model card to improve the transparency on AI model and system. And of course, to ensure that AI is empowering, we, um, we, we, we use our platform to build the application powered by AI using the no-code and no-code solution. We want every our customer and developer, they can easily get access to AI capability. We also provide a free AI education to our developer and user through our trailhead platform. And last but not least, as a resource organization, we deliver our AI research breakthrough through the research paper and open source effort. And finally, um, we want to ensure that AI is inclusive. Therefore, we need to ensure that the model is tested to, uh, with the minimize of the bias. And we need to test our model on diverse data set uh, to conduct the bias um, uh, testing. And we also need to conduct a consequence scanning workshop to ensure that we can identify the risks and mitigate them when we deploy to end customer. And last but not least, we also uh, build an inclusive team to build and deliver the AI capability at Salesforce. All right, so in the following, I'd like to um, choose some example work from our research team and product team and to showcase that how we actually put this principle into practice and how we carry on some research, building some tooling to enable uh, this practice to be successful at Salesforce. Now, the first important topic is about the transparency. And transparency is uh, arguably very important to the loop of many ethical AI uh, concern. And therefore, uh, we are very serious to make our AI model and our AI system more transparent. And one of the major efforts of trans uh, uh, transpa improving transparency is to use the model card. And model card is that a nutrition label for a model that communicate um, to the developer and end user about the detail of the model. What's the training data used in training a model? How do you evaluate a model? What is the performance? What are the ethical concerns, any issue that when you're using the model in your application, right? And all this kind of issue. And model card is very useful uh, when we want to ensure that the model is used in the right way. Over the past few years, we have published a number of model card. And you, if you are interested, you can see some of the example from our blog post links uh, in our website. Um, and we also, um, not just doing uh, the, 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 the model card for ourselves, we also create a tooling for our customer so that they can also publish the model card uh, for their end customer. So in our Einstein product, we have this model card creator well, you can create your own model cap when you train on your own data sets. So model cap itself is useful, but it's not sufficient enough to address all the issue of transparency. An even more fundamental technical challenging of modern AI system is the lack of explainability. If you try to look at the current modern AI uh, uh, system, and typically is that we choose a machine learning algorithm say a deep learning model, and given the training data set, we train a model, and then we deploy it in a right, in a real application to provide a recommendation or prediction. And such a system has some critical drawback. For example, you are not able to answer a set of questions like this. Why did you do that? Uh, why not something else? When did you success? When did you fail? When can I buy, uh, trust you? How do I correct a mistake whenever it happened? So the current AI system is not able to answer many questions like this uh, in an uh, um, effective way. Now, there's an uh, important area in AI, so-called expandable AI, that is exactly trying to address this question. Expandable AI helps a human to understand the prediction recommendation made by the AI system. And it can bring a lot of benefit to the business and end application. It will ensure that AI is more responsible and also more accountable. It also can reduce the impact of model bias, reducing the cost of making mistakes, also improving the model debugging and performance. It also helps to improve the code confidence and compliance. And last but not least, it will also help to make more informed uh, business decision. Now the next, I'd like to show you a video for an expandable AI tool 
that built by, by our AI research team. Today's AI systems can make complex predictions and decisions that rival, or even surpass, the abilities of human experts. Oh, but the AI decision-making process is often hidden in a black box, beyond our ability to comprehend them. The a better solution would be to make AI systems transparent and understandable by applying methods to explain how models come up with their decisions and predictions. Explainable AI, or XAI, uh, is the area of artificial intelligence developing to, such methods to reveal how models models. produce their outputs, the reasoning that led to a prediction or decision. Explainability is important. We need to know why AI systems make their decisions, so we can trust them, okay, especially if human lives depend on them. Without explainability, AI models can be hard to understand or trust, which can limit their adoption and even be dangerous. While many XAI methods are now available, it's not always intuitive how to apply them or interpret the results. What we need is a way to combine the different methods of XAI into one system and visualize explanations easily. Well, now you can with Omni XAI. Omni Explainable AI is a comprehensive solution that makes it easy for data scientists and machine learning researchers to see multiple types of explanations at different stages of the machine learning process. A one-stop library of XAI methods and interpretable machine learning algorithms. Five main features make Omni XAI so powerful. First, it supports multiple data types like tabular, image, text, and time series. Second, Omni XAI supports popular machine learning frameworks. It can generate explanations for several ML model types, from traditional ML in scikit-learn to deep learning in PyTorch and TensorFlow. Third, Omni XAI can analyze machine learning models using several popular explanation methods like Lime, Chap, Mace, GradCam, and PDP. Fourth, there's a unified interface, easy to use and extend generate explanations with just a few lines of code, and extend functionality by adding new algorithms. Finally, the graphical dashboard lets you visualize, analyze, and compare different explanations. The same pipeline is used for all tasks. Specify the machine learning model you want to explain, and choose which explanation methods to apply. Omni XAI then creates the explainers, generates the explanations, and launches a dashboard to visualize and compare them. Bottom line, Omni XAI has the most comprehensive set of XAI tools, with many explanation methods to choose from for several common data types, far more than any other XAI libraries. In short, to unify and simplify your XAI, use Omni XAI. To learn more about Omni XAI and other exciting projects, visit salesforceairesearch.com. Today's AI systems can make complex predictions and decisions that rival or even... All right. All right. Sorry for the uh, video. So I hope you get a sense of what this um, Omnis Ace AI um, tooling and this tool is currently open source and um, has been one of the most comprehensive uh, external AI and internal machine learning tooling in the market. Um, we have been using both for internal customer and also uh, external developer are very exciting to use it in many applications. So if you, you are keen to using it, feel free to download from our GitHub folder. You can either use for research purpose or any real application uh, in, 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 in your uh, uh, commercial ways. It's either way is fine. All right, um, the next topic I'd like to um, share is about this uh, robustness. This is a topic that is quite closely related to explainability, but it's very important when we want to deploy AI to high-stake application, for example, or the normal vehicle or medical domain applications. And robustness is very important to also ensure AI is responsible and safely deployed in real application. And the following, I'd like to share some of our example words in this domain including how can you improve the robust training when the training data set is noise. Um, for example, if you correct just the data set from internet, it's very often data can be very noise. How can you improve the training process 
um, with the better machine learning techniques. And the other topic for our purposes is that how can we ensure that when you deploy a model in real application, the model is, robust, is tested in a robust way. And um, you also want to ensure that the evaluation is consistent and you have um, be able to evaluate all types of possibility or corner cases. And um, I'll show some example of what, uh, particular with the focus on research work coming from our research team. Now, the first topic about this is um, robust training with noise data. And this is also a research topic in machine learning area, so-called learning with uh, neighbor noise. Um, and we, we actually have proposed a word, so-called divide and mix, that get, gets uh, very popular in the community. And the general idea of this word is that we try to transform the problem learning with neighbor noise into a semi supervised learning task, and therefore we can effectively solve this problem. Um, and the intuition of this idea is as following. Um, given a, 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 a noise data set, say you correct a data set from internet, it could be very noise. And we try to divide the data set into two parts. Um, uh, uh, one is so-called this uh, label kin data set, which you are sure that the label is highly confident to be correct. And the other data set is our neighbor data set, which you may have some neighbor information, but the super noise are highly likely to be incorrect. Right? And by dividing the data set into this way, we essentially form the problem into a semi-supervised learning task. Therefore, we can apply the semi-supervised learning algorithm to improve the task. And we also improve the technique so-called co-training by training on two separate levels so that we can correct the mistake by um, a joint training. And based on this technique, we are able to significantly improve the robust training uh, in this process. And I, I, want, uh, I want to say is that the detail of exactly the technique here is not important, but this is one of the first words that um, formulate a problem in similar sort of learning and if effectively address and solve the robust training problem. And in fact, in the recent year, there are lots of techniques trying to improve our method. And you can find more latest method from the good survey here that's sharing a lot of work about learning with noise neighbor uh, in deep learning method in the more recent years. Now, training the model effectively uh, is not sufficient. In many other applications, we also need to ensure that the model is tested also effectively. And in so far, we have been developed technique to help our developer and researcher trying to evaluate model in a more effective way. Our team has been building a tool called the Robustness uh, Team. And this is one of the tools to try to unify the NLP evaluation landscape for robustity testing. And in particular, we provide an open source one-stop solution that unify four types of uh, evaluation um, uh, strategies, uh, including the subpopulation, transformation, evaluation set, adversary attack, and we provide a very easy to use um, a, a toolkit and UI that you can easily compare all types of evaluation strategies just by a few number of kits. And this can significantly accelerate the robust uh, testing in many kinds of NLP applications. So in addition to a general NLP tooling, we also develop some robustness evaluation tool for some particular application like chatbot system. And we know that the chatbot is very popular use in many commercial applications, especially for our customer services uh, uh, application. And therefore, we know that building a chatbot is easy, but building a very robust chatbot is very challenging. And we have been building a tool that can help our customer and developer in the community to robustly evaluate their application. And we provide this uh, a toolbox so-called a box theme. It's a data efficient end-to-end box simulator, we can do the chatbot evaluation, diagnosis, and performance improvement for any application. And um, box sim use the generation simulation remediation paradigm that we leverage last language model to automatically create a conversation data for simulation. Therefore, we don't have to manually correct a large number of data, and we can still can accelerate the testing of a chatbot system. And, um, and this tooling has been uh, uh, very uh, effective to help our customer identify the corner cases, accelerating the chatbot development in their journey. And the last but not least, I want to cover another interesting and important topic that is uh, sustainability. 
and sustainability is fifth the cost, corporate core value at Salesforce, and we are very serious to committing addressing this issue. And in this work, we have been collaborating with our Net Zero Cloud. Net Zero Cloud is a Salesforce product that help our customer to achieve the Net Zero uh, missions. And it's a tool that try to integrate a set of capability for sustainability and carbon emission management tooling in one platform. And we have been working with our Let's Zero Cloud by using AI to empower the carbon emission management. And one of the interesting tasks that we need to solve is trying to accurate forecast what's the carbon emission trend for the company and what are the strategies that can then help the company to more effectively reducing the carbon emission uh, in an organization. And in order to solve that problem, we try to apply our machine learning tool called Banan. And Banan is one of the very popular time series annotation tool that we can do all kinds of time series analysis, ranging from time series forecasting, a normal detection, automatic machine learning to optimize model, and so on. So this is a tool that built by AI research team, and he has been open source, widely used in many applications. And this is another application that we're trying to solve in the time series forecasting on carbon emission data and help us to achieve the sustainability mission better. Now, the last part of my talk, I would like to focus on a very popular topic this day that is generated AI. And we know that there are lots of risks in this emerging topic. It has a huge application impact to society and community. But there are also a lot of open issues. As the AI researcher and, and, and developer, we have the huge responsibility to address this open issue. And um, I would like to share some of our view on this topic. And um, there's no like, a perfect solution. And these are just some of the um, early attempts in our organization. Now, you have been heard about generating AI uh, this day because ChatGPT is everywhere. And um, I was. I was given a talk to uh, in the NAS, and when I take the, 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 the taxi, and even the, the, the radio are talking about ChatGPT all the way. Um, and and, and ChatGPT is a, a popular chatbot system by OpenAI that reached um, 100 million years so just within two months, um, uh, 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 it launched. And it is the farthest growing application in the history of the computing. Um, and this is really uh, fascinating and because the performance is so impressed. But we know that there are lots of uh, issues with the generated AI capability. And in fact, it's not just ChatGPT. There are a range of uh, um, generated AI technology has been created in the recent years. Uh, that range from this chapel system powered by large language model to text to image generation, the DALI2 stable diffusion, or to more domain specific application that co-pilot for code, text to code generation uh, application and, 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 and more. So this area is growing extremely fast and has shown more and more impact to our society. But there are also lots of risks and issues that we as a community need to carefully address. And we know that generally AI is important and in fact in Salesforce, we are very exciting to see the opportunity that generated AI technology can help our customer in many applications. We are able to engage our customer in a whole new way that we can deliver the capability in a more personalized way to help our customer across the sales, customer service, marketing, commerce, and more. And um, this technology is so much impactful, but we know that there are a lot of uh, a no risk that we need to be carefully addressed when we deliver and build a capability in our platform. And here are some of the example risks that uh, we know about generating AI. First is about this uh, harmful content. We know that the generated AI model can produce us toxic content, bias content, or even violence content, right? And if the model is not careful tuned, you could also uh, generating the sexual content uh, for the text to image generation technique. And in addition to this um, um, uh, harmful content, sometimes the model also may discommunicate information. It's very difficult for any user to identify whether the information generating is correct or incorrect. For example, if you have experience to using ChatGPT, in many cases, it's communicate information in a very certain way, even if the information is incorrect. 
So it's very difficult for any user to identify which information is certain or uncertain. And that's very problematic in this uh, harmful content generation. Now, another issue of generating AI is that many of this model would train, uh, uh, could, be, could have been trained on this copyright content. Well, the creator or the end user, they may not even know that uh, the data is being used. And they are not given any attribution or even compensation when the data is being used to train this model. And this can cause a serious issue about this plagiarism if the model reproduces the training data. And that's exactly happening uh, now in many lawsuit cases in the communities. Now, another issue of this model is the lack of transparency. In many cases, it's difficult to know how the model is being generated, how the training data is being used and behind of these um, uh, models. Another important issue about this is that when this, uh, when this, when more and more data are created by generated AI technique, we essentially create a negative feedback loop in this uh, future system. And, um, and this is getting, getting even worse when more and more data on the internet will be generated by AI in the future. There's, a, there's a one uh, study uh, that shows an estimation that by 2026, 90% of the content on the internet will be created by AI. And you can imagine if this situation is there, when you train an AI monitor to learn a model on the internet, and you actually learn a lot of content that is generated by itself by AI, other AI tooling, and that will just increasing the uh, the the bias um, uh, because of communication bias situations. So this is also an issue that we need to be careful. And another issue is about this uh, label practice. We know that behind the impressive performance in the AI, there's an army of invisible workers that often people of color are uh, in the global sun. They spend a lot of time and effort to help label many of this uh, 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 training data and even they need to sort it through some of the horrible content from the internet, or all of the words and with, with a little pace, and also um, they may not have any mental support whenever they exposure to this um, uh, contents. And this is, is a critical issue that we need to be careful to address um, because um, we know that these workers, they will be replaced on one day because of technology advance, and many of them will need to relearn the new skill sets uh, in order to adapt into a new environment. Another critical concern of this social impact is about the uh, de-skilling. We know that if people are more happy to rely on AI technology on some tasks, they will be losing the capability on the task over time, or at least they won't be able to do so well in the future. And how can you address this de-skilling issue is also critical open challenges. Um, and last but not least, um, uh, an important topic of this risk is on the sustainability. We know that generated AI or foundation model, large language model, they are very energy consuming. And uh, many of these models consume massive amount of carbon when training and hosting this model. There's a study showing that if you want to train the GPT-3 model, which is 175 billion model, the amount of carbon consumed by training this model is equivalent to the amount of energy that you can drive a car from Earth to the moon and back. So the huge energy that we consume in training these large language models. So we need to really careful address all this issue when we develop capability in this area. Now, Salesforce is uh, trying to very seriously address all this no issue when we build and develop technology in this space. And we are among the very few organizations trying to uh, address and propose and define a guiding principle when we practice and develop technology in our area uh, within Salesforce and beyond Salesforce organization. And I have to say this guiding principle is still in the early stage because Generadia is evolving very fast. We are still in very early days of this transformation technology. And these are just some words in progress, but we are committed very seriously to address this issue. And we want to um, work together with our other partner um, and company and this community to learning and iterating this process to improve um, and address the issue in the long term. Now, but uh, in more detail, uh, let me show you a few concerns 
and how we can address all this uh, uh, issue in practice. First of all, it's about the accuracy. We know that it's very important to improve accuracy, and we want to deliver the accurate result to our customer. But in addition to accuracy, we also want this result can be verifiable. Right? We want to engage the user to verify the result whenever necessary. And more important is we want to communicate uncertainty. When there's a situation that the answer or the result may not be accurate, we want to communicate to the end user that there's uncertainty about the result. And we can also enable the fact checking, for example, citing the source when we present the result to the end user, allow the end user to double check the, 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 the answer. For example, double check the citation, statistics, um, and even the dates and, and location, things like that. And second, um, uh, principle is ensure that uh, generated AI is safe. For any of the generated model we train and deploy, we do ensure that we can identify and mitigate the risk as much as possible. So we need to do bounce testing, explainability testing, robustness assessment whenever we train and build this model. And in order to also make sure that the model is safe and, um, um, and, and also we need to protect the privacy uh, for our customer. When there's a data correcting either from internet or from a customer, we want to make sure that the personal identifying information in your training data is well addressed when you're using to tra uh, uh, train your models. And that's about safety. And the third part is about the honesty. When we correct the training data and to train our model, we need to be honest and to follow this um, data prevalence and principle. We want to ensure that the data used to train a model has the consent from end user, whether you're correcting from open source venue or you're provided by end customer or end users. We also need to ensure that commute our customer when the content and data is generated by AI especially when your technology is autonomous delivered to an end customer. For example, you build a chatbot system that automatically responds to a customer. You have to ensure to a customer that the system you build is by AI generated. And the fourth part is empowering. We want to supercharge human capability using AI. In some cases, it's reasonable to fully automate your process. Um, as we know, there are some uh, uh, professions, so-called 3D profession, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, that the, the task itself um, is not productive and also not meaningful for human and, um, and it's meaningful to using AI to fully automate the process. But there are some tasks and situations AI could just pay a supporting tooling, especially when a human judgment is required. For example, in medical domain application, AI should pay a very important supporting role, but not completely uh, replace a, a doctor, for example. So in many of these applications, we need to be careful using AI to supercharge human rather than complete human displacement. And also we need to be careful about the labor practice when we engage uh, human labor in any stage of our um, generated AI development, we need to revolve our um, contributor, creator, and laborer with a reasonable amount of living wage, we need to provide a mental support when they are exposure to risk contents. And last but not least is the sustainability concern. We know that um, large language model, foundation model, they have to consume a large amount of uh, carbon and, and, and energy. Um, and, 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 but we can actually try our best to reducing the carbon emission as much as possible. For example, instead of always trying, just putting a larger model, we can actually study a better data to improve the performance. Um, and you, need, you can just using a right size of model, uh, but better quality of data to improve the result. And um, if you are familiar with the latest news, um, three days ago, uh, Meta just announced their 65 billion of large language model that actually outperforms OpenAI's 175 billion of models. And the result is not surprised because they are just curated better data set, better quality data set, and you can actually significantly improve. Even the model is three times smaller than the origin, uh, than, than the open AI one, right? So that means choosing um, uh, 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 in practice, 
you can actually reduce the carbon emission by carefully address the, uh, the task. And another way to also improve the carbon emission is try to reuse the pre-trained uh, model that is already open source in the community. And I'd like to show you some example for our study in the next, um, we have a case study in, um, in the domain of multimodal generated AI that we exactly practice a responsible AI. And that not only help us to save the energy cost, but also help us to accelerate our research innovation in this space. Um, this is one of the interesting topics we have been studying for years. And, um, and recently we are very excited that we generate very impressive result because some of the uh, important innovation in this space. But let me show you a little bit about the history of the study in these uh, areas. In 2021, uh, we proposed a model so-called the Albert, and this is the first end-to-end multi-model encoder for vision and language tasks. So if you are familiar with NLP, there's a very famous model so-called a BERT, and BERT is a very, one of the first uh, very successful encoder model for the NLP community, and you can consider Albert is the book style model for vision and language tasks, right? And at that time, this model is very successful. You see the state of the art performance. It outperformed many larger scale models with a better performance. And we're thinking that um, Albert is great, but Albert also has some limitation because the model is relatively small. It also may not perform well for some of the complex generation tasks. And therefore, one immediate question is, can we improve the generation performance? And in 2012, we proposed a novel model, so-called uh, Believe. Um, and Believe is the first unified model for both understanding and generation tasks. And this model, you can consider a kind of combination of BERT and GPT and one model. And it's one unified form model that you can solve all the tasks in this domain. And Believe is twice bigger than Albert and the year uh, state-of-the-art performance. And it also outperformed many much larger models at that time uh, for many state-of-the-art tasks. And the key idea of belief is not just um, the model architecture itself, but also we have a novel technique to significantly improve the data quality. Uh, we propose a, a bootstrapping uh, method that is able to clean up the data set correcting from the internet and significantly improve the noise neighbor uh, in the data set. And that's another key factor that we significantly outperform the other tasks. Now we have another state of their performance that we can do both understanding and generation. But the model side is still a bit small as if you compare many gigantic models this day. Now immediately uh, the research team we can ask is that, how can we do something better? If we want to do some amazing capability that chat GPT, how can we make it better? Now you can imagine by scaling law, a very nice idea is just putting more parameter, putting more training, scale the model, you can definitely improve the performance. But we ask ourselves, is this the best way to do it? Is there another way we can save significant amount of carbon emission, but we can achieve the same performance? And this actually inspires our innovation is that, so we're just using the same model and scale up, or can we redesign our model with more efficient way to train the model? Right? And that actually innovate and inspire us to propose a new architecture this year is believed to that is first unified multi-model um, um, uh, foundation model, we can support a very impressive performance for multi-model chatbots. And the idea for um, um, Badeep uh, 2 is that we try to leverage existing pre-trained model um, uh, in the open source community, including a NAS language model, open source that has been widely available, and also the pre-trained visual encoder, the VIT model, that have been existing in the computer vision community. And we try to redesign the architecture in that we don't have to retrain the entire model from scratch. We only need to train a small amount of trainable parameter and by forcing the other pre-trained uh, pre models. And by this way, in order to train a 12 billion of uh, model size, the amount of trainable parameters is only 188 uh, megabytes. And this is just only 1.5% of the original models. And you can imagine training this model is even um, consumed a less amount of energy than training the Bolivar model, even the size is some 25 times bigger than the original model. And this can significantly scale our model and performance in real-world application. And in fact, this model has very impressive performance 
It not only outperformed the Perdue One model, it also outperformed many larger scale models by other uh, uh, organization. For example, it's even better than 80 billion model by DeepMind on many of the benchmarks. And because of the very impressive performance, we actually built some of this uh, multi-model chatbot um, prototype, and it shows very impressive result. And uh, for example, you can imagine if you want to using ChatGPT styles of uh, capability and future, you can just take a photo in a nice places, and the app is able to automatically write a normal message, and you send a postcard to your friend automatically. So you can create very interesting application using the capability of Belief Two. And you can also use for either education or entertainment purpose, you can take a slab of this uh, movie poster and you can ask the belief to, to tell you um, any story about the movie. You can also ask any question for your kids or education purpose. And also imagine that in the future, belief to can be your virtual tourism guide. Um, you can just turn on your camera and you can talk to your friend to tell you the history of the Denmark places Ask any question you can have. So believe to the potential to unlock this um, multimodal chat, chatbot um, is uh, unlimited. And we are very exciting. This is a new area that um, uh, we can solve many problems. But more important lesson I want to share here is that sustainability is mindset that does not necessarily sacrifice the performance. You can actually even isolate your research progress. You can imagine if you train your original model, it not only consumes more energy, but it also consume more time to get a model out. Can I ask you a question? Go back, go back to Red Bull. Yes. Because you spent earlier slides telling us that the output of some of these LLMs are, are not accurate, cannot be fact-checked. You said with Blip 2, you're not doing all the training from scratch. You're only doing some fine-tuning training. So, no, be ground. How do you know the answer is correct, even with Blip 2, right? Because you don't still know the source. Yeah, yeah. Yes. How do you know you can trust the Yeah, I, I think you raise a, a total valid question that when we choose an existing model and putting into Blip 2, we need to also see if it's doing the test when a model is going to put in a real um, uh, product. And I have to say, this is still an early stage of prototype. Uh, demo is not a real product. So when we go to a real product stage, we need to do a lot of bulk testing um, and and uh, fact checking and also the the evaluation. And that's that's the stage that when you go from a research demo to a product deployment, it's very important to ensure the model is able to generate the right result. Another important thing is that. Using the model that may generate toxic content doesn't mean the end model must be toxic. You can do a lot of post-checking, post-refinement, uh, fine-tuning to ensure that your model is able to generate valid content. So yes, there are lots of ways to improve, and, um, but this is still very much an open topic. All right, um, I think I spent a lot of time, and maybe I've taken some more time um, to the audience for questions. And let me just conclude on my talk by proposing a call for action. Uh, we know that generate AI is still in early stage, and, and this is still uh, very much an open topic. And I want to propose uh, this action for a community to address this issue together. First of all, when you start a generate AI project, you should seriously consider what kind of content should be generated or should not be generated algorithmically by AI. Um, there are some applications that you don't really want to use in AI because it's very critical and very dangerous if you uh, not using AI in the right way. So you need to first consider whether it is right to use it or not. And second is that you need to develop a technique to ensure that the content generating is um, careful, uh, validated. For example, uh, you don't want to generate toxic content, and it's very important to develop either text-based or image-based filtering technique to ensure your content is very regulated. And third one, we need to embrace human-centric design. We need to ensure that AI is using to augment it or aid human in the creation process and not to just simply replace and replace a human in a way. And the fourth, um, in order to uh, deploy a real application, we need to do a serious bounce test, meet, identify the risks and mitigate them as much as possible. And many often we need a robust data set in order to ensure that all these issues is carefully addressed. 
And also, we want to enable proper correction of mistake whenever they are made in an application when the model is getting deployed. And always keep in mind of uh, sustainability because this is not just to save the cost and energy, but also you can help you to inspire more innovation and even accelerate your research and development progress in our space. And last but not least, as I say, this is very much an open topic. It's impossible to just for a single organization to address all this topic. We need a community effort. We need a society to work together, including governments, industry, academia, to work together to address all these open topic, including EdTech, NIGAS, and many other issues. And with that, I would um, stop here and um, I'll open for any question from audience. And if you are interested for knowing more about AI research by Salesforce, you can visit our research website and um, yeah, I'll take a question here.